Hi, everyone. It's Paul Ward here, and welcome to another 15 Minutes. I'm very excited today. We have a special guest, Carolyn Braun, with First American Natural Hazard Disclosures. Carolyn, welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. Absolutely. And of course, we want to thank our sponsors, Opus, Escrow, and The Money Store. So, Carolyn, um, for those folks that, that don't know, and we are putting together a first-time homebuyers uh, series, uh, what is the natural hazard disclosure that's part of a, a real estate transaction? It's an actual hazard disclosure report, which is a legal disclosure form that is required in the state of California for all resale transactions. So NHD reports indicate if a home is located in an area that's prone to flooding, fires, earthquake, seismic activity. So if you are selling a home in the state of California, this um, is provided from the seller to the buyer for the buyer to take a look to see what potential hazards are affecting the home that they're considering to purchase. Okay, so I don't, as a seller, I don't really need to personally know about these things, right? I'm not, I'm not telling you if I have a, a leaky pipe underneath my kitchen sink or a, you know, an electrical short in a plug. This is, who's putting this together? Um, well, we have a team of um, geologists that put, pull the report together through databases. Okay. So, and it's just basically, it's just natural hazard zones, things that are affecting the property. Um, it, it would not have anything to do with leaky pipes under the kitchen sink or anything like that. It's more natural hazards, like okay. big fires and floods and earthquakes. Okay, so hazards of the region, not necessarily the property specifically, but you know, in the region in general. Yes, yes. And, but it is very, it's very um, parcel specific. So okay. if you have a home on ABC street and you're in a fire zone, the house across the street may not technically be in a fire zone. So um, it is a APN or parcel based disclosures just for that particular parcel. Gotcha. And how do you, how do you find that people, um, I mean, of course it's all valuable information to know if you're in a, you know, earthquake zone or a liquefaction zone or a radon gas zone. What, what are kind of the big, the big ones for, for our area, for Southern California? Well, we're required to disclose um, the flood zones, mm -hmm. the dam inundation zones. Okay. There's two, two fire zones that have to be disclosed wildland and very high and then there's the seismic activity earthquake and then landslide and liquefaction so those that's what came into play in 1998 when this um, legislation um, drew this report up so those are the big ones that have to be disclosed since 1998 lots of other hazards have come into play lots of legislation has come into play and so the report has gone from basically a few pages to close to 40 plus pages. So every every buyer gets a, a, a book, is that correct, of about 40 pages that talks about hazards of the region? Yes, they will get a, they'll get an actual report, which is 40 plus pages. And in there, it will talk about the flood zones, fire zones. Um, it gets into local disclosures affecting the property um, mm -hmm. versus state disclosures. Um, there's a tax report in there. There's also environmental hazard report talking about environmental hazards within a mile or quarter of a mile of the property. Okay, but would it talk about, thing, let's say, a earth, an earthquake fault line in somebody's backyard or maybe a natural gas line in somebody's backyard? Would it, would it mention that? Yes, it would. Yes, it will. If it's in the fault zone, it will, you know, clearly you're going to be in an earthquake zone. If mm -hmm. there's a transmission pipeline in the backyard, our particular report does disclose that to the um, potential buyer. And then they have a three-day right of rescission to take a look at that report and decide if that's the property they want to buy. So. Gotcha. And do you find that the report um, that a lot of people, uh, just out of a curiosity, do a lot of people back out of the transaction once they read these reports or do, is it just kind of, or do they continue with the sale or what, what's kind of the, the overall uh, response that people have when they read um, the reports? You know, I, I've been doing this for 23 years. And so 
very few people back out of one, mm -hmm. but um, there are uh, occasions where there might be a mother with a child and there's a transmission pipeline within 2000 feet of the property. And that particular thing um, alerts her and, and she sure. decides, yeah, no, or maybe liquefaction or a fire zone or something. But it's, it's very rare. Um, I don't see it happen very often. Sure. And I would imagine that, um, I mean, the Thomas fire and the Woolsey fires were such big natural disaster events. You know, I mean, interesting that the, you know, the, the Thomas fire actually happened in December, which you would think the hills would be green. I mean, certainly they are this year because we've had so much rain. Um, but did the reports change after such big, such big events? Um, legislation has changed. Mm -hmm. um, the reports Legislation has changed where um, there's new assembly bills talking about if the property does sit in a fire zone, that there's going to be some defensible space um, requirements for either the seller or the buyer to take care of. And this is all recent within like the last, you know, two years. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, there is climate change and we, our fires that we have now are what we call mega fires. Mm -hmm. And that's anything that burns over a hundred thousand acres plus, and that seems to be very consistent. And um, up until this last rain storm, it just won't stop yeah. raining now. So it's like the, right. the opposite. The opposite now it just yeah. continues to rain versus no rain. Yeah. So, um, so the the report is given to the buyer when during the transaction. I mean, the 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 sale price has already been negotiated. Escrow is already open. When does the buyer typically get that get that report? Probably, I would say that they get it with escrow instructions. Um, many times, escrow will order it and send it out with the escrow instructions, and that mm -hmm. allows um, that particular buyer to review that report and then sign off on it. And once gotcha. they sign off on it, they're they are actually, you know, saying yes, I'm aware of everything in this report, and that is protecting the seller because the gotcha. seller is required by law. And if a, if a buyer was, was really cautious, could they get access to the report or the information before they negotiate on the home, just so they're not, you know, wasting their time, wasting anybody's time? Is there a way to access these, this information early? There is. Actually, um, a lot of my top agents order the report when they actually go on a listing. And mm. this is providing it to the seller going, hey, this is what's going on with the property. And that way if there's a potential buyer who's working with an agent, they can reach out to that uh, seller and they can provide the report. And also just a phone call to me as well. I'm more than happy to um, look up the information. So. Great. Great. And um, in addition to the, uh, the, the big ones, earthquakes, fires, floods, what are some of the, the lesser uh, considered items that might be in there? Well, there's um, tsunamis which oh. affect Ventura County. So we, we will disclose that the property is within a particular area, a tsunami area. And um, so we disclose the tsunamis, we disclose environmental hazards. Um, there's the Right to Farm Act. Um, we disclose that the property is within any, a mile of any um, farm activity. Mm -hmm. So uh, we disclose uh, airport disclosures. That's in the report as well. So there's mold, there's Megan's law, there's, it just goes on and on. Right. So, so I would say every single house out there has got something. I mean, there's no, there's no house that is 100% uh, immune from everything. Something. Something, so, you know, something's that, going that's, on. Right. That's funny because um, it is so rare that I see a clean report mm -hmm. and, you know, the agent will call me and they'll like, look at this report. And I'm like, wow, this one's like clean. This has nothing going on. Um, right. San Bernardino and Riverside County actually have the most natural hazards in Do the state really? of California. Yes. So Just we're good here in Ventura. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's, that's good to know. But yeah, I, I could not, I, I could not think of a single property that I've sold that would just be, be clean. Just yeah, it, it's rare. So yeah. 
And what's kind of the, the if you say uh, to a f folks out there that are watching or listening, what, how, what would you say to kind of uh, really look for, really pay attention to on that, on that report? It might be overwhelming. I mean, 40 pages of information. It is. And if you're a first time home buyer, you're already overwhelmed as it is. And now you're getting this report of all these, you know, dangers. Dangers, um, yeah. What, what would you say to kind of really red flags to look out for? Um, red flags would be flood zones, fire zones, and in the tax report, Melarus. Because if a property sits in a flood zone or a fire zone now, you're going to require fire insurance, flood insurance. Those things are going to affect the outcome of what their monthly output will be. Um, so those are big things. Um, earthquakes, not so much. Um, dam inundation, not so much. But definitely flood, fire, and Melarus. And, and for those folks that don't know, what, what is Melarus? Melarus is a special assessment that is put on the um, property by the builder. So when you're building these new developments and new homes, it helps fund schools, parks, fire stations, police stations, funding, things like that. And it's typically, well, now it's a typically a 40 plus year bond, um, but um, it's transferred to the homeowner and it just becomes part of their tax bill. So it's kind of like a second, second tax on top of the property tax that they're already paying. Yes, yes. We call them direct or special assessments. So I understand that you have a, a, a book or a booklet that is, is helpful to, uh, to buyers? Yes, we have a guide to disclosures. It's a great little piece for buyers. It explains every little disclosure in the report, like one to two sentences, like what is a flood zone? What is a fire zone? What is radon? Um, what is an underground storage tank? Um, and it's a great piece. Um, um, for pretend buyers. Helps okay, them well, get a really nice explanation of what it all is about. Great. We'll be sure to add that to our web web link here on the on the YouTube video. Is that is that in multiple languages? English, Spanish, and Chinese. And uh, Carolyn, how would how would folks get a hold of you if you, if they have further questions? They can reach me at 661-755-5965. And you've got a you've got a website as well? Yes, www.fanhd.com. And when you're on the website, just go to resources. They've got a lot of great little short videos um, talking about a flood zone or a fire zone and different booklets. And it's um, a nice little tool. Wonderful. Well, Carolyn Braun with Natural Hazard Disclosure, we, we greatly appreciate you participating and uh, all the information you had to share. Thank you.